God bless you, amazing Z team. I am so excited to be with you again today. I can't wait. I wish Pastor Loretta was here, but she's doing something very special, a mother-son time with Youssef, and she's uh, going to be headed home to Barcelona soon. Now, let me tell you how good God is. Uh, we've been working on this visa for her, and uh, our Z team knows this, that she she came and was turned around and sent back. It's very traumatic <clears throat> due to COVID restrictions, even though she had her uh, her COVID uh, shots. But has anyone heard of the uh, uh, architect called Gaudi? Gaudi was Spain's most famous architect, one of the most famous architects in the world. People come from around the world to see houses and buildings designed by Gaudi. In fact, Sagrada Familia, a huge, uh, huge uh, otherworldly uh, cathedral that he designed is still under construction. Uh, it's been under construction for over 100 years, but I'm not a cathedral guy. I'm not Gothic cathedrals, but this is amazing. It's just amazing. Well, here's what I'm getting to. Um, the Gaudi Research Institute have sent a letter to the immigration sponsoring Pastor Loretta as a guest lecturer in an event that they're doing in May and June. And they've done the same thing for me. We're, we're officially invited to be guest lecturers <laughs> at the Gaudi Research Institute. Isn't that something that God opened that up? Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. That's a, that's a good report. Listen, YouTube and Facebook and Twitch people, everybody who's hearing and watching and also by the podcast, we're going to give you a, a big Z Church applause today. Come on, Amazing Z Team. Turn your microphone on and let's make some noise. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for our, Thank God for our Facebook family and our YouTube yes. family yes. and everybody who's watching and listening. We are here for you. Now, the people that you see here behind me uh, from time to time, that's our Amazing Z Team. And, and we're volunteers. We are, work together to put on these services so that we can be a blessing to you. You're welcome to be a part of the Z Church platform anytime you want to, but we're going to love you right where you, where you are. And I want you to do this before we get started. I want you to make a decision to have a connection with us in the Spirit, not just an internet connection, but a, a Holy Ghost connection. Paul said, we're absent in the flesh, but we're together in the spirit. And that's the connection we want to make with you. So everybody, let's lift our hands and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for making us one. Say it. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, thank you for making, making us, making us one. 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 Say this, we're say we're one. one in the spirit. Go ahead we're and say We're one in the spirit. We're one in the Lord. We're one in the Lord. We're we're one one in the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for connecting us. Thank, Thank you, you Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, for connecting us. Connecting us. We're going to have church today. Amen. We're going to have church today. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I want to tell everybody who's participating by, by YouTube and Facebook, it's so easy to kind of get into a spectator mode. But if, if we clap, you clap. If we pray, you pray. If we shout, you shout. If we lift our hands, you lift our hands. And let's keep this uh, connection going all through this service. Lift your hands up. We'll start right now. Lift your hands up, unless you're driving a car or flying an airplane. Lift your hands up. And uh, I want to bless you. Heavenly Father, I bless everyone who's connected with us today, and may the connection be strong in the Spirit. Father, let us, let us sense what you're doing. No matter where we are, let us, let us sense your presence. You said if two or more together, you'd be there. Well, we're together. Praise God. We're seated in the heavenly places together in Christ Jesus. This is where the church should meet in the heavenlies. Praise God. True worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. We don't have to have a building. That doesn't make the church. It's our connection with you that makes us the church. Now, bless me to be a blessing and bless everyone to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I want to give you another word. Of, yeah, I want to give you another word of advice. We love people who, who chat with us and communicate. We have people monitoring uh, Facebook Live. They're, they're monitoring uh, YouTube. You'll see my name pop up probably, but it's still, it, it's still us. It's still Z Church. I can't do that and this at the same time. So people have volunteered to, for that ministry. It's a very important ministry to communicate and pass your messages along if you have a prayer request or a praise report. And, um, 
we make some comments sometimes that help uh, help with the service. Praise God. In fact, our closed captions are great. I go back and watch this later on, and the closed captions are so good because people are not only putting the scriptures there, but they're, it's kind of like having an amen. They amplified what's said, and, and they post little, little things there that really are encouraging, some real zingers. And you can also do the little emoticons. We take that as an amen. Praise God. So if we see a little heart or something, uh, we take that as being an, a, an amen or a so be it or something like that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the other way you can participate, if there is a word from the Lord for you, and you know it's for you, or God has somehow touched your heart, you need to let us know. You need to give us some feedback. Would you do that? Praise God. It's very important. Give us praise report. If God does something for you, we're believing God for salvation and rededication and miracles and healings and, and freedom. And if God does something for you and the blessing of God comes on you, you really should. This is your duty. Give God glory for it. So let us yes, know. Sir. Praise Amen. the Lord. That's important. And we almost always, I'll say 99.9% .9 of the time, have communion in every service. We want you to be a part of that too. Praise God. And stay for the afterglow. Sometimes our Holy Ghost ministry continues right into the afterglow. Sometimes we're praying and prophesying uh, after service in the afterglow. And then uh, sometimes, uh, as Paula said, uh, we just have fun. Sometimes we share scriptures. So be part of the conversation, be part of the fun in the afterglow. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I hope you're as Praise excited as I am because I am quivering with anticipation. I, I'm so excited right now. I'm thinking about laying hands on myself. Praise oh, God. God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to talk about when you mess up, you got to get up. When you mess up, let me tell you a secret. Let me see if anybody's listening to me. I'm going to move in here a little bit closer. Every human being is imperfect, except for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> to err is human. Amen. To forgive is divine. The Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And then if a man says he has no sin, he's a liar, and that's a sin right there. And so uh, everybody makes mistakes. Now, how people deal with mistakes uh, determines you know, how they're going to recover and how quickly they're going to recover. And the idea is that we want to recover. If we make a mistake, we don't want to just wallow in a mistake. We don't want to prolong that negative experience any longer than we should. And so we need to learn how to bounce back. I want to talk to you about bouncing back. Uh, first scripture, Proverbs 24, 16, you know this one. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he gets up again. One translation says no matter how many times he falls, he gets back up again. There's a product, you've probably seen this advertised on television, it, they still sell it today, it's advertised on the uh, internet, it's been around for, gosh, uh, forever, and it's called Life Alert. And it's a paging system that alerts uh, emergency people if someone needs medical help. And it's specially geared for the elderly, elderly, and they advertise that they save a life every 11, 11 minutes. It's a great outfit, but... Uh, there's a, there's a catchphrase that they've used. It's their slogan. Uh, I guess it's their slogan, but uh, they've used it in all their commercials forever. If you go on their website, you'll see it. And it says, help, I've fallen down and I can't get up. Do you ever hear that? Help, I've fallen down and I can't get up. Well, <clears throat> that's, that's sad. Sometimes that happens, but uh, it's not... I wish there was a spiritual life alert. I guess there is. It's called prayer, right? If we if we call upon the Lord, then He will rescue us. But uh, this idea of being down and not getting back up, that's contrary to who we are. And, and people say, well, it's hard. Well, you know, look at the Apostle Paul, how many times he was beaten and stoned and, and shipwrecked and fastings and hunger and had to fight wild beasts and all that. And if anyone had a right to complain, he could, but he got up every time. Uh, they stoned him one time and, and left him for dead. In fact, he was dead, if you will, will. He bragged, he said, I was in deaths often. And that doesn't just mean in, uh, 
uh, you know, situations that could result in death. I believe in more than was, he was dead. Like when they stoned him, they don't finish until you're dead. And later his disciples came and stood around him and he got back up and left on his next missionary journey. You can't keep a good man down. Praise God that Apostle Paul was a good man and he kept getting up. When he was imprisoned in, in uh, Herod's palace, he said, uh, I'm patting my back, myself on the back, King. He said, I'm exactly where I want to be. <laughs> in prison, house arrest. He said, I'm patting myself on the back. When he was in Rome in a dungeon that was below street level, and every time, there's not enough room to lie down, and every time it rained, uh, the sewage filled up his cell to chest deep. And here he is talking about the joy that's set before him. You can't keep a good man down. I'm going to teach you how to bounce back. We've got to learn how to, how to bounce back and make that recovery quick. Have any of you ever played with a, with a Super Bowl? Um, they also call them bouncy balls. Uh, a lot of fun. And they, they've been around for, gosh, 50 years, I guess. Uh, somebody invented this synthetic rubber. Uh, to go in tires and other things, but they figured out it made a good kid's toy, so they made it into a ball. But this thing has so much kinetic energy in it that uh, it just goes crazy when you bounce it. Uh, I used to use them when I was a kid and when I was an adult. I still have fun with them. And bouncing, they just start ricocheting all over. They are so lively because it's got, uh, it's got, what is that stuff called? I don't even know why I'm sharing this. This is information you can't use. But anyway, it's, it's called polybutadiene, <laughs> if you want to know. But I've got to get this other toy that came out. It's called a sky ball. It's made out of the same stuff, but it's hollow. And it's filled with compressed air. It's inflated with compressed air and get this, helium. So this thing's got some lift to it. You can bounce it 75 feet in the air, whack. And if you were to play baseball with it, everybody could knock the ball out of the, out of the ballpark because it's got so much energy. Um, you know, a football's inflated, right? It's, got, it's, it's inflated on the inside. Uh, basketball's inflated. Volleyball's inflated. Soccer ball's inflated. Basketball's inflated. I happen to know the PSI for a basketball. It's between 7.5 PSI pounds per square inch and 8.5 PSI, depending on the manufacturer of the ball and uh, the altitude and environmental things. There's some other factors there, but the National Basketball Association has very strict rules about how to inflate uh, a basketball. Same thing with soccer. Um, I don't know if you can use this information, but the soccer ball has the most inflation, the most PSI. Uh, the, the basketball second, you know, strongest inflation. The um, football, the third, and um, the volleyball, it's a little softer. It doesn't have as much air in it. And all of these balls rebound very quickly. You know, you can dribble a basketball. But bean bags don't bounce, <laughs> and and neither do deflated footballs or deflated uh, basketballs. You can't kick a, a a flat soccer ball very far. And some Christians are deflated, and that's why they don't bounce. You got to have something on the inside that's pushing against the things on the outside. I pray that you be filled with the Spirit of Might by His Spirit in your inner man, that you might be strong. Amen. You gotta, you gotta be filled up with God, filled with the fullness of God. And the more of God's atmosphere, the more of His breath, the more of His glory you have on the inside of you, the higher you'll bounce and the quicker you'll recover. Amen. So we've got to get filled up on the inside with something because there's pressure in the world. Now you can have enough pressure to have an equilibrium, but we don't want just an equilibrium. We want to have enough enough of God on the inside of us to, to bounce higher and to use every opportunity as a springboard for another success. So are you going to fall, uh, stumble, make a mistake, you know, do something you shouldn't have done, uh, something's not going to work right, your, your dream uh, is going to be delayed, uh, 
people are going to, you know, go crazy off on you and, and tell you things that you don't, you know, you don't like, they hurt your feelings and zada, zada, yada, yada. Yeah. So you got to have something on the inside to, to help you bounce back and to recover quickly. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. Lift your hands and ask God to fill you up with his goodness. Amen. Father, just right now, breathe on us like you breathed into Adam's nostrils, like Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Ghost. Let the breath of God come into our nostrils and fill us up right now. Everybody take a big, deep breath and let out a praise. Say, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do it again. Yeah. Praise God. Breathe in the presence of God. <sighs> Breathe out praise to God. Hallelujah. Breathe in the presence Glory of God. God. Breathe out the praise of God. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. You, don't Jesus. be a beanbag Christian. Beanbags don't bounce. They just flop on the floor and stay there like a like a pancake or something. Don't be a beanbag Christian. Amen. You know, I'm, I'm interested what part of this message you're going to remember. That's probably one of them that you'll recall is don't be a beanbag Christian. Uh, you know, Good word. what is a beanbag? It's a, it's a little toy uh, that you can have fun with um, that's filled with beans. Some sort of, uh, the original ones were beans. You could make one. We used to make them out of socks and go in the kitchen and get mama's pinto beans, the dried beans, and put it in there and there and tie the sock up and make our own bean bag, but uh, full of beans. Uh, a lot of people are filled with, with beans. Things should have been better. <laughs> I should have been, I should have been more rich. <laughs> I should be stronger. All those beans inside of the bean bag, all those regrets. If you're carrying around a bunch of regrets, you're not going to bounce. You need to get rid of those regrets and get filled up with the breath of God. Let me hear an amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. That's my Texas, South Texas accent. How you been? Okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, I want to talk to you about the... Uh, uh, 24 hour rule. But I want to start with this scripture out of Matthew. Um, then came Peter to him, Matthew 18, 21, 22. You can put that up there for me. And he said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Did you know which direction this is going? He's saying, not someone I sinned against, but someone who sinned against me. How many times am, am I going to forgive him? Seven. And uh, Jesus said, uh, no, uh, seven times 70. Seven times 70, which is, uh, gosh, 490 times. But I think that's within a 24-hour period every day. I think the seven times 70 is, is a, a daily uh, number, a daily quotient for uh, quota for forgiving people. And I'll tell you why I believe that, because the Bible says that the mercies of God are new every morning. Praise God. So the clock resets. I love this scripture. The clock resets every morning. Praise God. Uh, let's say it at, at, when the clock strikes 12 a.m., right? That's the beginning of, of the morning, p.m., a.m. Now, you may start counting. Uh, it's a new day when your alarm clock goes off or the rooster's crow or whatever. The sun comes up. Um, I think pa Pastor Tim and I do the same thing. I get up in the morning before I put my feet on the floor. I say, this is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I don't start my day without reminding God that his mercies are new every morning. I love that scripture. I say, God, the, everything resets. You hit the reset button last night. Today is not uh, yesterday part two. This is a new day. Amen. And, and yesterday does not equal today. This is a brand new day. Uh, uh, you don't have any marks against me. You don't have any strikes against me. I don't have any errors. I don't have any faults. It's all been, uh, the, it's all been wiped away because the mercies are new every morning. You shouldn't let things accumulate. You shouldn't carry things around for days, weeks. And I know people who carry, carry stuff around for years and they nurse grudges and they carry these disappointments and, and they talk about all their regrets and what should have, could have, would have happened. 
forget that. People hate that. You wonder why people kind of move away from you and avoid you? If you're talking like that, people are going to start looking at their watch and fidgeting and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, listen, I got to go. I think I hear my mother calling me. <laughs> don't, don't talk like that around people. You'll drive people away. Don't talk about your regrets and your disappointments and failure. Talk about how good God is. Talk about your hopes and dreams. Talk about your plans. Talk about the mercies of God. Amen. Talk about something positive. Amen. Create an atmosphere Amen. around Lord. yourself where it's charged with the presence of God. You'll be breathing the rarefied atmosphere of heaven. Praise God. The mercies of God are new every morning. And, Hallelujah. Uh, let, let me tell you how I look at this scripture. Check me out. See if, if you think I'm right. Peter's saying, if someone has sinned against me, how many times, I'm, I'm going to say a day, should I forgive them? And Jesus said uh, seven times 70. Now, do you think a person would be coming back to Peter 490 times in a day? Please forgive me, Peter. Please forgive me. Probably not. But I'll bet Peter remembered what happened 490 times a day. How many times have you forgiven someone and the next day you're rehearsing it again? Yeah, they did me wrong. I, my, wow. Well, uh, but I've forgiven them. Oh, yeah, but they did me dirty. I didn't deserve that kind of treatment, but I forgive them. You know, <laughs> every time one of those negative thoughts come to you, every time you rehearse one of these offenses that someone committed against you, Go ahead and do it and, and say, I forgive them. I forgive them. And if the thought comes back, I've forgiven them. I forgive them. And if it comes back again, I have forgiven them. And if you have to do that 490 times a day, um, go ahead and do it 490 times a day. You probably won't. And uh, if you come back the next day and those thoughts still linger, well, you can start over. I forgive you. I forgive them. I forgive them. I, I really, really do forgive them. I choose to forgive them. I forgive them by faith in Jesus' name. <laughs> and just do it over you, and Jesus. over and over. Because if you let those regrets get on the inside of you, you'll turn into a bean bag Christian who falls and can't get back up. And I don't want you to do that. Thank you. I don't want you to be a beanbag Christian. Praise God. Uh, here's a scripture that you ought to put to memory. And if you don't, if you don't have any other scripture memorized, other than probably John 3:16, everybody knows that one, right? This should be the second one you memorize. First John 1 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. If we confess our sins, he is just, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins. You confess your sins, he forgives your sins. No conditions there. Confess it and he's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. You may, have to, you may have to quote that scripture a dozen times a day, a hundred times a day, but every time you feel like you've failed, every time you feel like you've made a fault, missed the mark, committed a sin, disappointed God, whatever, then you need to confess, okay, okay, I, I, I miss the mark and I, um, I have no one to blame but me, but thank you, Heavenly Father. You said you would forgive me and cleanse me. And I thank you for doing that right now. I'm free from that sin right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise there's, God. No, there's no reason to walk around under condemnation when you have a loving God who's full of mercy and grace. And he's never going to run out of it. His, his mercy is everlasting. His, his grace is everlasting. Abundant, super abundant grace. And if you're not taking advantage of it, then you're disadvantaging yourself. I found out a long time ago that my father was really a softy. He was hard on the outside and, you know, Texan and, and he'd been a fighter and, and, uh, you know, was in the Navy during the war and all that. He was a, rode horses, had a ranch, you know, 
dressed in cowboy clothes. And, uh, but I found out he was, he was kind of a soft touch. <laughs> Just had to know how to approach him, you know? And, uh, I don't remember him telling me no about much. The only thing he put his foot down about, and I don't understand this, but I forgive him. He wouldn't let me be a bullfighter. I was 14 years old, and I knew that was my calling in life to be a bullfighter. But my father said no for some reason. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the theology of this is real simple. A righteous man falls and gets back up. He bounces back. That's scriptural. And, and we don't, there's no reason to let regrets hold us back or a burden of sin to hold us back or unforgiveness to hold us back. There's no reason for that. All you have to do is do it. Now, I'm going to give you two lists here. We're going to talk about some, some practical things. But um, number one, Psalm 1611 says, in your presence is fullness of joy. And remember, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we need to be in the presence of the Lord, which we are right now. If you'll believe it and receive it, we prayed. We asked God to, to be here with us. He is here with us. And so why don't you just lift your hands right now, and, and you may start having a very strange sensation called joy, because in his presence is fullness of joy. You think there are going to be any sour pusses in heaven? You think there are going to be any cynics in heaven? You think there would be people walking around saying, oh, everything's just too clean here, and, and you know, everything's just too perfect here. And look at that street of gold. Ugh. Look at the water of life. Ugh. No, there's not going to be any of those, those party poopers in heaven. Heaven is joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you can have heaven to get to heaven because Jesus said, pray, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. People are happy in heaven. And if you have a hope of heaven, if you plan on going to heaven, you ought to practice being happy so there won't be such a shock when you get there. Amen. 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 I'm preaching better than your amen in any way. Praise God. Uh, Isaiah 61.3. Appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. The oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of happiness. Uh, another thing we need to do is we need to uh, give ourselves some pep talks every now and then, some self-encouragement. David encouraged himself in the Lord. At, at Ziglag, when he was, uh, you know, People had been killed, the women had been kidnapped, the children had been kidnapped, and, and everybody wanted to kill David. They wanted to stone him, and he was depressed, but it said he encouraged himself in the Lord. And if you're waiting, you know, to, for a personal coach or a, a personal counselor or your own, your own uh, you know, pep squad to follow you around, cheering you on, that may not happen. You got to learn how to, you got to learn how to encourage yourself and cheer yourself on. Praise God. And this may come as a shock, but really and truly, people I know people love you, and I know you've got some sincere friends who, who love you and pray for you, but no one is as connected with you as you outside of Jesus. I mean, no one really feels what you feel and understands things the way you understand it. And, and wants to succeed, wants for you to succeed more than you want to succeed. And if, if you're not for yourself, how are you going to overcome these things? If, if you're not on your side, if you're not willing to help yourself, if you're not willing to encourage yourself, if you're not willing to pat yourself on the back and say you can do it, who's going to do that for you? You're just sitting and waiting for someone to come and pick you up out of the ditch? You're waiting for someone to come and, oh, there's a poor beanbag down here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rescue this poor beanbag. You may be there a long time before that happens. Now, I pray that God will send you a helper and send you an encourager. But remember, he sent you this, this helper, this person called the Holy Ghost. And in the presence of the Holy Ghost, there's joy. It's love, joy, uh, love and peace and joy unspeakable. It's joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. Yeah, the Holy Ghost. Uh, I got up a few, I think it was day before yesterday. 
And, um, you know, Pastor Loretta and I, as you know, we've had some challenges recently. And everybody does. Uh, you know, we all have different ways of, of handling our challenges and we have different pain thresholds. I thank God my pain threshold is pretty high. Um, uh, part of that's genetic and part of it's just uh, stubbornness. I just refuse to get in, give in to stuff. Uh, but um, we have had some challenges. And the uh, day before yesterday, I got up and I went in to pray. And I, I, I made a decision to pray in the Holy Ghost, which I do every day. I said, I'm going to pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in tongues. And there was a part of me that thought, you know, I'm probably going to be interceding with deep groanings. And, you know, because of all the stuff I've been grinding through, I'm sure that my prayers are going to be grinders too, you know. <laughs> and I opened up my mouth and a song came out. That's the first thing that came out of me was a song in the spirit. Praise God. The Holy Ghost will encourage you when you need encouragement. Yeah, the, the, the wind of God, the Holy Ghost came in as a rushing wind and it filled everybody. And this is what we need if we want to bounce back as we need the wind of the Holy Ghost to fill us up on the inside. Father, I thank you for, go ahead, lift your hands. I thank you for blessing everyone with the breath of God. I may say this several times during this service, but it's so important that we, that we allow the Holy Spirit to revive us, to breathe into us, to give us a charge of heaven's power, to strengthen us by his spirit on the inner man so Praise that we can God. bounce back. We need to be able to bounce back. If you're having a hard time bouncing back, that's, that's good because you know you need to get filled up. <laughs> you can turn that into a positive. Oh, I'm not bouncing. I must need to pray in tongues more. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good. Amen. Point. Yeah. I, I'm not my, my happy self. Yeah. That's another, that's another prayer request that's come in to you right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't get it. I don't know why people fall and they don't get back up. At least make an effort, you know, push, struggle a little bit, try to get up. And I believe that you'll be like that crippled person. Jesus said, take up your bed and walked. And once he started trying to move, he got strong. Praise God. So every step you take is going to increase your strength. And everything you reach for and take a hold of is going to in, influence your strength. Praise God. Make an effort. Move forward. Don't stay flat. Amen. Good okay. Amen. All right. You ready to have a little bit of fun? Wrap this up? Let me see, what should I talk about first? The negatives or the positives? The negatives or the positives? I'll start off talking about the negatives. That way we'll have something positive to look forward to. Um, things that depress you. Stay away from things that depress you. You know, the joy of the Lord is, is our strength, but happiness is actually based upon happenstance, and we have something to do about our circumstances. You can change your circumstances, and I recommend that anything you can change, change it. If it's within your power to improve it, change it. Uh, my son was, Yusuf was having a conversation with someone, and they said, well, there's, and it was a medical conversation, and, and they said, well, there's no room for improvement. And my son said, well, improve the room. <laughs> You can always make things better. Praise God. So avoid things that are that are depressing, and um, that would be um, a certain certain kind of foods will depress you. I don't do well on sugar. I like it; it gives me a buzz, but I crash immediately afterwards, and I'm lethargic. And if I have too much of it, I I, I fight uh, melancholia, and it's a chemical thing. It's a depressant. That's you know, sugar is kind of a stimulates you and then it lets you down real quick as a lot of drugs do they i think sugar really is a drug it, it's it's a powerful powerful drug um chocolate's a drug actually chocolate's 
not so much of a depressant. It's uh, got some good benefits. Alcohol, um, some people are happy drunks and some people are not happy drunks. And uh, alcohol is a depressant. And if you're going through stuff, drinking's not going to make it better. Binge drinking is not going to make it better. So, you know, we need to have a little common sense here. And then worry. Uh, worry will deflate you. You need to break the worry habit. It's a sin. And uh, perfectionism. I have, a, I have a young friend here, an artist in Barcelona that I sort of mentor. And she's, she's told me, she said, I'll remember the things you said to me. I'll take them to the grave with me. She just is so thankful. And, uh, but she's a perfectionist. And I said, listen, uh, loosen up. Making mistakes is part of art. We call it a happy mistake. Uh, in fact, uh, Salvador Dali said there's, a, there's something sacred about a mistake. A and uh, he said, you need to learn from it, and uh, you need to rationalize it, and you need to sublimate it. I'm going to say something about that word in a minute, sublimation. Um, Internet and media. There's a lot of negative stuff on the Internet. And uh, I mean, a lot of violence and a lot of uh, heartbreak and homes being split up. And, you know, they have to put drama in these things to get people to watch it. But um, don't don't watch that stuff, especially if you're going through a hard time. <laughs> Look at some happy stuff, you know. Uh, there's some happy movies out there. And um, if you if you're going through a rough patch, uh, lighten up on what you're watching and what you're listening to. I mean, a lot of this Amen. music out here is, is, is uh, even Christian music is, uh, here's one that the church has loved for years. It's, you'd probably never have heard it. You have to be my age to know it. Tempted and tried, we're off made to wonder why others prosper though in the wrong. Cheer up, my brethren, sing in the sunshine. We'll understand it all by and by. By this time, everybody in the church is crying, you know. Lord, have that's mercy. Not, that's my, not my idea of a gospel song. My idea is a gospel yeah. song. It's got a Hammond B3 in it and a drum kit over there, kick drum. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Praise. Glory to God. No funeral music. And, and country western? I mean, everybody's always getting divorced, losing their trailer house, having their pickup truck. Uh, their dog runs away. Uh, their wife runs away with their best friend. This is what makes this country music. Bango. Yeah. yeah. Of course, if you play the records backwards, the pickup truck comes home, the dog comes home, the wife comes home. That's a joke. <laughs> Thank you for that courtesy laugh. And, uh, you know, the Internet, I'm going to have to get on this for a moment, but uh, gosh, there is so much bandwidth that's dedicated to bad news and trouble and strife and anger and venting and finger pointing and conspiracies. Um, there are little there are little pockets on the internet of good stuff, but let me tell you something. Even some of the Christian stuff is toxic. There are so many people who define what they believe by what they don't believe. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in healing. I don't believe in tongue talking. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in that. Is that is that how you define faith by what you reject, what you don't believe in? We ought to find something to believe in and take a hold of that. And there's a, a lot of negative stuff on the internet. People all, every one group's mad at another. I don't know, maybe it's because we're close to the end times when people become, become fierce and angry and truce breakers, breakers and disloyal. Uh, I see more and more of that. And I don't know what society has, has gotten so angry. And I think the internet is fueling that. Uh, we used to have just, uh, you know, like three TV stations in the U.S., three networks. And then we started getting cable and getting more content. And then all of a sudden, when the Internet opened up, the floodgates opened up. And now it's awash with all kinds of information. And, and this may, may sound like an old fuddy-duddy here, but I think most Christians have brought unhappiness into their lives because of what, what they're watching on the Internet. And what they're, what they're feeding on the internet. You got to put a filter. 
somewhere in your brain and watch what you be careful what you're watching be careful what you're listening to Jesus said be careful how you hear be 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 careful who you're getting your information from Thank and you, the Man. other question is what, what what are you going to do with most of that information anyway you you get angry because there's something happening in another part of the world some injustice well what are you going to do about it you're going to you're going to crusade and get your own army together, get your own organization and go over there and do something about it? Probably not. You're just going to walk around angry and then you get angry at other stuff and you don't know why you're angry at everything because you got stuff in there festering. Uh, be careful about which battles you choose. A lot of people have, have chosen causes and battles that I don't think God ever called them to, to, uh, you know, to focus on that, but somehow they feel that's their calling in life, you know, that yes, they got to they gotta pick up this banner and go out and march and rally people and everything. And then you're all upset all the time. Why aren't people with me? Why aren't they, why aren't they doing what I'm doing? Why aren't they supporting what I'm doing? And it's, you know, and after a while you lose your health and lose your mind and you get to heaven and Jesus, Jesus will say, oh, what were you doing? That's not what I called you to. I wanted you to have goodness and mercy following all of your life so you could dwell in the presence of God forever. Amen. Uh, let's don't do the work of the Holy Ghost. Let's let the Holy Ghost do his own work. The reason a lot of people are frustrated is they're not walking in the spirit. They're walking in the flesh. And that's the carnal mind is enmity with God. No wonder people are being bags. Because you got to walk in the Holy Ghost to get filled with his goodness and power. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, I talked about bad music. Uh, let's talk about toxic people. If you're there, you go, Pastor. Uh, you cannot you cannot soar with the eagles if you're hanging around with turkeys. <laughs> Some people are so toxic that they will infect you with their cynicism, with their bad attitude. The things that they're upset with, they, they're not happy unless they make you upset with the same thing. If they're miserable, mis misery, you know, loves company. Uh, you need to take an inventory of who some of the toxic people are and put some distance between you and them. You say, oh, but Jesus has called us to love everybody. That's true. Uh, agape love. Agape love, which is the kind of love that causes us to value even, you know, the unlovely people. Jesus had that kind of love. He loved everybody. He loves the sinners. He loves, he loves everybody. But he also put some distance between him and other people. That'll Amen. Be, that'll be a whole lesson one day. Did you notice he put some distance between him and his own family? Did you notice he put some distance between him and Nazareth where people were trying to throw him off the cliff? Did you know that he put some distance between him and the people at uh, uh, Jerusalem? He sure did. Praise it, Pastor. Galilee, praise God. And you said, but, 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 you know, we're all members of the body of Christ. Yes, but it, it's the wisdom of God that placed our nose far away from our stinky toes. Do my, does my nose need my feet? Yes. Do my feet need my nose? Yes. But thank God that I don't have nose between my toes. You understand what I'm talking about? Sometimes it's the distance in the body of Christ that, uh, among its members that make the body function perfectly. And if we tried to put everything in the same space and everything directly connected to everything, then nothing would work. Amen. There's got to be some distance so that things can flow and move and extend and reach. Praise God. So uh, it's all right to put a little distance between you and toxic people. I found out that when I did that, my life got <laughs> easier and happier. And sometimes, sometimes we're talking about family. Well, I know that's a thorny subject. I believe in family. I love family. But, you know, it was Jesus who said, uh, don't think that I've come to bring peace, but mother against daughter and father against son. The gospel will divide people. And, um, you know, no man has left houses and land and family for my sake and the kingdom's sake won't receive a hundredfold. Left family. Yeah. 
So uh, uh, occasionally, it's wisdom, it's prudent to avoid toxic people. Now, it doesn't mean you have to, you know, be separated from them forever. It just means that you got to give yourself some space to recover between these visits. Amen. Make sure you don't. Amen. Make sure you don't carry that infection home with you. I, I'm not as worried about the COVID virus as I am the the cynicism virus, the mean spirited virus, the anger virus, the the. Uh, Virus has gotten a hold of people around the world where they're doing bizarre things. Yes, it's uh, we've we've got to we've got to we've got to immune, immunize ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Amen. And then the, another thing I'm going to bring up is uh, the reason a lot of people are unhappy they're in the wrong church. Church ought to make you happy. It ought to be a happy place. There should be joy in the church. And, and you go to the church to hear good news, not to hear somebody behind the pulpit regurgitating fake news and spinning conspiracy theories and, and preaching anger and division. Uh, if you're in a church like that, get out of it. Uh, the church on. is supposed to be an agape love feast. It should Amen. be a safe place. It should be a refuge. And... Uh, I refuse to use pulpit time to stand up and talk about current events and political events. You don't need me to tell you what's going on in the world. Uh, you get information you don't even want. You know what's going on. You don't have, I'm not going to use my valuable ministry time and discipleship time and preaching time to, to talk about and rant about the bad things that are going on in the world. There you Praise go. the I'm Lord. Here to preach good news. I want to preach you happy. Praise God. Yes. I, I, every time you leave Z Church, I want you to have a spring in your step and a bounce in your walk. Amen. Because you get charged up with God every time you come together here. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. All right. Uh, I got to keep moving here because uh, I just do. Here's some of the positives. You know, stay filled up, read your Bible, study and pray, and go to Z Church or a good church. Praise God. That goes without saying. Be a giver. I've noticed that people who give are happy. It's, it's a joy to give. And uh, they have a lot fewer problems. People who are givers, they just have fewer problems. And serving God, there's a joy that comes through serving God. If you're busy with the work of the ministry, you don't have time to sit around thinking about what you would have, could have, should have done. So volunteer at Z Church. We've got a place for you. Uh, learn how to forgive and forget. Uh, very important. And um, yeah. learn how to uh, sublimate your failures. There's that word sublimation. Uh, what does that mean? It, it means to take a, it means to, to make lemonades out of lemons, to take something bad and turn it into a positive. I, I'll give you a, a good example, a friend of mine who's the wife of one of the country's greatest megachurches was a sex addict. Here's the pastor's wife, and um, she's, she's addicted to sex and going out and, and uh, you know, having these, uh, these affairs. And it was, a, it was a terrible thing. It was wrecking their marriage, and it was dividing the church. And, and um, they even sent her to uh, um, sex rehab. I didn't know there was such a thing, but there is. People with sexual addictions, they have rehab like people with chemical addictions. And that didn't work out too good because there were all these other sexual addicts there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she finally she finally did overcome that. It took a lot of prayer and counseling and and what have you. And um, rather than trying to bury that, she was open about it and transparent. They've been Oprah Winfrey show talking about it. They're writing a book about it. She goes around holding a big seminars for ladies who. Uh, you know, they want to know about these issues. Maybe they struggle. So she's taken something negative, one of the failures in her life, and turned it into a ministry, something positive. So even our, even our failures can become springboards for success, but you got to get back up. You just can't stay down there. You got to bounce back. Praise God. So uh, 
my, my hat's off to her. Good for her. Praise God. Uh, what you talk about is important. Praise, very important. I cannot emphasize that enough, um, especially when you're down. If, if you're blue, don't sing the blues. <laughs> sing praise songs. Praise God. Sing yeah. to the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord, all, all ye earth. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Uh, praise God. Uh, learn how to laugh. If you stumble to make a mistake, just laugh. Uh, a friend of mine got so angry, he picked up his shredder and smashed it against the wall. And he said, I just shredded my shredder. <laughs> and, he, and they laughed. He laughed about it. Yeah, well, what are you going to do? Oh, my God. I lost my temper. Jesus had a temper. He just managed it better than you do. Praise Amen. God. Praise the Lord. Uh, your environment's important. Your surroundings. And uh, I think it's very important. What we look at every day, what we hear every day, the ambiance, the smell, the textures, all of those are factors that we can change. Um, change your scenery every now and then. Get out of the house. This, I think one of the reasons people are so uh, crazy right now is uh, because of social distancing and being locked up. And now they're, they're just uh, out of control, it seems like. But uh, you don't have to go out of control, but go for a walk. Sit under the stars. Uh, go find a, a high place, a mountaintop or a hill or something to sit on and get some fresh air and change your situation. Praise God. And then take care of yourself. Pamper yourself a little bit. The Bible says that no man ever hated his own flesh. He loves it, nourishes it, and cherishes it. And you need to learn how to uh, pamper yourself uh, I'm all for uh, my wife going to the, get a pedicure and a manicure because it makes her feel better. Her nails look pretty and, and uh, it helps her with her attitude. So it's, uh, it's one of those little maintenance things that we do. And, and we guys, there are things that we like to do. Uh, I told you that I was, you know, we've had some challenges. So I got up the, the other morning and I'd been praying and do every, doing everything right. But I, I want to be absolutely honest, honest with you. I'm still in a little bit of a funk. You know, just and so um, I kind of I kind of revolted. I didn't shave. I didn't wash my hair. I put on some old scrubby, grungy looking clothes, and grungy looking jeans and and the tennis shoes that my wife hates. And she threatens to throw them away because they're so ragged. And I put all that stuff on and, and I started to go outside and the Holy Ghost stopped me. And he said, you go in there and fix yourself up. So I went in and shaved and shampooed and, and uh, bathed. And I put on a, a, a nice shirt and a blazer, put a scarf in my pocket, put on some flannel slacks uh, with my blue blazer and some shiny shoes and uh, put a little, you know, smell, good smell of on. And I have these friends that I meet with for coffee just about every weekday. That's our ritual. And uh, I came walking up and they said, what's going on with you today? And I said, I am, I am sublimating my temptation to melancholia. And they went, oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> it's funny how if you change your clothes, it'll change your attitude. I, I was prophesied to a few years ago by um, Katy Perry's dad, you know, Keith Hudson. And he called me out of the service. He said, Larry Huggins, come up here. I've got a word for you. Kind of surprised me. It was a big crowd of people. So I, I went up there and he said, you're trying to figure out where you know me from. He said, I've known you for a long, long time. He said, but I looked a little different back there. So the guy in front of me, the Keith Hudson of today, has rhinestones and fringe and a baseball cap with all kinds of stuff on top of it and a lot of color. And, and he looks like he's in a rock band or something. He's gone from being a button down three, three piece suit guy like a lot of us charismatic preachers, uh, and to this fellow that looks like, a, looks like a, a rock star, an entertainer. And here's the word he had for me. He said, you're at a time in your life where you need to do what makes you happy. And don't worry about what other people think. It's about you. And the Lord wants you to be happy and enjoy your life. So you can, you can live where you want to live. Bingo, I'm in Spain just like that. <laughs> That's all I needed. And he said, you can dress the way you want to. Out came the Western clothes. Hallelujah. Why do I wear this kind of stuff? Because it makes me feel good. 
Hey, man. I put, and I, and I put it on, I get in front of the camera, and I say, yeah, this is cool. It feels good. And it, it's interesting how just a changing your clothes, an accessory, getting a haircut, um, giving yourself a little treat every now and then, how they can help you. You need to learn how to bounce back. Praise God. And, and not let anything keep you down. And every little thing you can do to improve your attitude, do it. My friend Zig Ziglar always used to say, your attitude determines your altitude. If you're a pilot, you'll understand that term. Uh, if your nose is pointed up in the airplane, you're going to gain altitude. If your nose is pointed down, you're going to lose altitude. And too many people are walking around with their eyes cast down. You need to look up to, to the hills from whence cometh your help. Your help comes from the Lord. If you'll, if you'll elevate your vision, if you'll look to the horizon, if you'll look beyond your four walls, if you'll look beyond your circumstances, if you'll look beyond how you're feeling at that moment and see what God has for you, it, you can celebrate the glory that's set before you. And no matter what your circumstances, they, th those circumstances will fade and grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Amen. Amen. God. Amen. And then I'm going to touch on one last thing, and I'm probably going to get some eyebrows raised here. But I want to talk about supplements, antidepressants. Um, I'm, I'm going to do a little pastoring here right now. If, if you went to the doctor and he said, um, you have a low iron content, we've done your blood work and you're, you're deficient in iron, we've got some iron supplements here for you, would you take them? I mean, it's real simple, you, your body's not producing enough iron, so you take a supplement and, and you get iron back in your system, start to work better. Potassium, yeah, everybody needs potassium. There's a lot of things we need. And uh, we just take a supplement. If your doctor gave you potassium, you wouldn't say, oh, I'm such a failure. I have to take a potassium capsule. No, it, it wouldn't even be a speed bump on the road to glory. Well, listen, some people have other kinds of deficiencies. They're deficient in serotonin. They're deficient in estrogen. Uh, they're deficient in dopamine. There's a lot of chemicals that affect the, our moods and the way we feel. And a lot of what people are dealing with is not just their outside circumstances, it's their inside circumstances chemically. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine, a great pastor, built several great churches. And one of the things he did that was outstanding was he organized a family church camp where about 50 churches came together every year for five days, brought the kids, the teenagers, and had preaching and ate together and worship and recreation. It was, a, it was a great, great thing. And he worked very hard. He was the hardest worker there because he was the chief organizer and a lot of responsibility. But his wife was going through the worst time in her life and it had been going on for years. And she was just depressed constantly and, and throwing fits and screaming and acting out and breaking things and calling him names. And he would stay up all night long trying to get her calmed down, knowing that the next morning he's going to have to get up about 6 a.m. and start with this big conference that he's running with a smile on his face and do that for five days. She would even do crazy things like uh, beat him, rip all of her clothes off, curse and run naked through the snow. And he would have to go running through the snow and, and grab her and bring her back in before she died of hypothermia because she was just going crazy. So it looked like the marriage was just not going to work. And he begged her to go to the doctor. No, she wasn't going to go to the doctor. Didn't believe in doctors, you know. And uh, finally, it came to this. He said, listen, this is an ultimatum. Either you go to the doctor or we're done. I cannot live like this anymore. So finally she went and they ran some tests. You know what they found out? She had zero estrogen, zero. So they put her on a supplement and she started praying and believing God. And within one year, she didn't need the supplement anymore because her body started producing estrogen. They had a second honeymoon. They're like two lovebirds, uh, everything sweet. And it all came down to just a chemical imbalance. And here's what I would recommend to you. If, if you need a supplement for your mood, take it and take it in faith. 
Do like my friend did. She said, I'm taking this, but God's still healing me. I'm taking this for now, but I'm not going to take this all of my life. God's healing me, making me better. Praise God. You see, it's hard to get, get your healing when you're hurting. It's hard to get your healing when you're confused and when you're angry and when you're upset and everything. But when she got that leveled out, she could think right. She could believe right. She could talk right. And she got right results. So uh, here, here's the way I see about it. If you need to take a little additive into your system just to balance so that your brain will produce dopamine, so that your brain will produce serotonin, so that your body will produce the hormones that you need, men and women, then do it. There Amen. seems to be a lot more, there seems to be a lot more stigma with with uh, women taking things than men because you know men take uh, testosterone uh, replacements and creams that they rub in to you know for the testosterone and then they uh, they do the steroid things, the anabolic stuff, you know, dietary or otherwise, and and uh, nobody nobody really seems to give them a hard time about that unless they're a professional athlete. But when a woman has a has to have a feel good pill, she has to put up with all this condemnation. Listen to Pastor Larry. There's therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Period. Amen. Hallelujah. Just take it until you don't need to take it anymore. It's simple. Praise the Lord. Amen. I, I, I hope that sets you free. Now, somebody's probably going to hear about this and, and write me back and say, what are you doing telling people to get on, uh, you know, antidepressant drugs? I'm not telling anybody to abuse anything. I'm telling people that if we need to make some adjustments and if, if it's possible to do that under medical supervision, not self-medicated, but supervised, I think it might be the first step into, on the road to recovery. Praise God. Amen. Good well, yeah. word. And what if you had to do it for the rest of your life? I mean, it's better than living uh, with a, a chemical imbalance for the rest of your life and, and driving everybody around you crazy and you crazy too. So uh, let's keep it simple, sweetheart. Keep it simple. God loves Amen. you. Amen. I love you. Uh, and you're going to be okay. I want you to bounce back. Praise God. Don't be a beanbag Christian. Be one of those super balls. Bam, 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 bam. Hallelujah. Yes. Be that sky ball. You bounce it. It goes up 75 feet. And, uh, and the enemy, the devil, will look at you and say, dear me, I didn't think they were going to get back up, but they shot up like a rocket. They weren't even long, en long enough on the map to get a count. They were back up on their feet again, going again. Yeah. Praise God. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. I hope this helped you. I hope you learned something. Lift your hands right now. Amen. Father, I want to bless everyone out there who's dealing with a chemical imbalance. Of course, divine healing is your highest and best. Of course, walking in divine health. That's something we're aiming for. But uh, the sick need a physician. And I don't think there's any condemnation involved in this. But I'm praying for those who want to get healed, who want to get weaned off of this, that they'll come to a point. It might be immediately. It might be tomorrow when they found out that they've received a miracle and their bodies are producing these much needed chemicals. I thank you for a, that kind of a healing. Oftentimes it's not our childhood trauma and people trouble that, that gives us problems. It's our ability to cope because the wrong chemical mixture in our bodies, that's easy to fix. Then we can cope. Then we can believe. I'm praying a prayer of, of release for all of you who've been feeling guilty and carrying around shame because of medication. Let me tell you something. I, I believe, I'm like Oral Roberts. I believe in God and medicine. I believe more in God than I do in medicine. You know, it says that doctors practice medicine. Well, God's not practicing. He's a great physician. That's a Amen. Great. But uh, uh, if I'm in the dentist chair, I want some Novocaine I want, or nitrous oxide. I want them to give me something. If the pain lasts, then I, 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 I want them to give me something to manage the pain until the pain goes away. I was uh, I was driving uh, 
friend of mine was driving me through Central California to a preacher's meeting. And I was the keynote speaker. It was an all-day seminar. And I had a dental emergency. Man, it was terrible. I mean, just I was out of my head with pain. And we stopped at a dentist. And he gave me uh, Percodan. I'm telling you what, you can abuse that stuff. I was loopy. I was flying. I preached for like three hours stop without taking a breath. <laughs> the preacher was so kind to me. They said they all knew I'd been to the, to the dentist and they all knew that he had given me some painkillers and they were joking. They said, you know, uh, Ambassador Larry's a lot of fun when he's on drugs. <laughs> If people just hear a portion of this message, you know, out of context, they'll, they'll, they'll interpret that the wrong way. But my point for bringing that up is I'm not, I don't feel condemned because I get a shot of Novocaine or the doctor gave me something to manage uh, severe pain. Uh, it doesn't bother me uh, to take an aspirin. I've heard preachers preach against it like you're going to go to hell if you take an aspirin. Actually, aspirin are pretty good for you. They're blood thinners and they're anti-inflammatories and it's a miracle drug. Uh, and uh, it's hard to abuse them. <laughs> uh, it seemed like they're just very helpful and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't you let any preacher put you under condemnation. There's enough condemnation coming at us without having preachers add to it and pile on. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're if you're listening to me and you're not saved or if you're backslidden, you don't have to stay backslidden a nanosecond longer and you can get saved in a heartbeat. You are one little prayer away from getting saved and, and back in fellowship with God and enjoying the blessings of God. You're just one prayer away from bouncing back. I want you to say this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, Heavenly I believe Father. in the Bible. I believe in the Bible. I believe in the Word of God. I believe, I believe in the Word of God. I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe that Jesus is Lord. He was raised from the dead. He was raised from the dead. And I know that He has the power to save my soul. I know that He has the power to save my soul. Right now, I receive Jesus and His saving power. Right now, right now, I receive Jesus, Jesus and his saving power. Come into my heart, power. Jesus. Come into my heart, Jesus. And this backslidden Come stuff, I'm done with it. I'm bouncing back. I'm bouncing back. back. I'm bouncing back. Stuff, I'm it's done back. with it. I'm back. I gave yes. you too much to repeat. That's all right. You got the <laughs> right part. I'm bouncing back. In Jesus' name, yes, you are. You're bouncing back. And you're going to continue to walk in victory. And if you'll hang out with us here, here with us at Z Church, We'll pump you up. We'll be like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I want to pump you up. We're going to pump you up with the Word of God, pump you up with the Holy Ghost, pump you up with joy, and uh, it'll be enough to get you through the week and some left over to, to share with other people. You're going to have a smile on your face and a twinkle in your eye and, and uh, you know, sweet words coming out of your mouth. People are going to be attracted to you like bees to flowers. Amen. Thank, Thank you, God. Jesus. Amen. Well, uh, we're going to have communion. We're going to have a we're going to have a happy communion. Is that all right? We're going to have yeah. a happy. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Una comunión feliz. Gloria a Dios. Amen. Amen. Gloria a Dios. Let's take our elements, the the bread and the wine, and uh, let's start with uh, talking about the bread. The reason Jesus suffered the cross and the shame and the pain was that he looked forward to the glory that was ahead. And we need to do that. We need to recognize that his body's not broken anymore. It's, uh, it's glorified. And he was corporally raised into heaven and seated on a real throne. And his real blood was placed on the altar for our salvation and forgiveness. And so this is not a sad moment. This is a happy moment. I grew up in a church where communion was always sad. We had it like once a month, whether we needed it or not. And every sermon was the same. You need to examine yourself to see if there's any hidden sins inside of you. Because God can't bless you if you've got any sins. So you better, you better examine yourself really closely because if you drink this cup unworthily, you'll get sick and die. 
I was afraid of communion. It was such a morbid thing. And it took me years to find out that communion is a celebration. Communion is a party. Communion is celebrating the victory, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. When we Hallelujah. eat this bread, we are eating to wholeness, to preservation, to health, to healing, to joy. In Jesus' name, let's eat. In the presence of God is fullness of joy. The glory of God hovers over the blood of Jesus. The glory of God manifests over the mercy seat where the blood of the Lamb is placed. And this cup is a cup of celebration. It's not a cup of mourning. We're not going to you know, like people cry in their beer and sing the blues and all that stuff. That's not what this is about. This is about V-I-C-T-O-R-Y, victory, victory. That's our cry. We can't lose. We're already winners. This cup is the essence of who Jesus is. God is love. This is a cup of liquid love. And when this goes inside of you, this stuff called Power and love is going to get inside of your blood. It's going to revive you. You're going to get filled up again. That way, when you hit some rough patches, you'll bounce instead of doing a belly flop. Yeah, in Jesus' name, let's celebrate. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, oh, the blood of Jesus, he washes as white as snow. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. praise. Amen. Yes. Clap your hands. Oh, 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 oh. God. I got a word for somebody that's very important. It may be on YouTube, maybe here in, the, uh, in our platform or even on, uh, even on Facebook or Twitch. But that word deflated meant something to you. It actually came out of your mouth. You say, I feel so deflated. I just feel like the wind's been knocked out of me. I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to recuperate. But I'm here to tell you that those days are gone. Jesus is breathing into you right now, filling you with his power strengthening you with his spirit in your inner man so that you'll be strong and to be able to comprehend him. Yeah, things are changing and they're changing right now because of his power. You need to receive that. If, if you use those words, I've been deflated. That's a word of knowledge. I've been deflated. And it's connected to a word of wisdom. You're going to get reinflated. It's a little bit about what's happened in the past and something that's happening in the future. You were deflated. The wind was knocked out of you. But God is reviving you, filling you with his presence, breathing into you. And you're going to get blowing and going again in Jesus' name. Now, if you feel like that word is for you, you say, I receive it, I believe it, I receive it, I'm getting up again. And, and it could be that there are hundreds of us that need that word. We need to get revived and blowing and going again. Don't stay down. Don't stay down. Stay up. There'll be plenty of opportunities to put this message to work. I'm pretty sure of that. But at least now you have something more to work with. And uh, you're going to recover quickly. You'll bounce back so quick that you won't even remember uh, touching down you're going to be up here less more than you are down there. Praise God. Well, we're going to, we're going to, uh, two things are going to happen here. Uh, Brother Steve's going to come and, and, uh, help our faith with our giving. We want to, we want to encourage you, uh, put your gifts in our hands so that we can do what, uh, ministers of the Lord do. They offer up spiritual sacrifices unto God, uh, that are acceptable, acceptable unto Him. And we want to do that. We want to receive your tithes and offerings and bless them 
and offer them up to God so that he'll release a blessing into your life. You need a blessing, don't you? Praise God. And uh, Steve's going to show you how to get a bigger blessing. Then we're going to end the service, but we don't, we don't really end it. We just go to our afterglow. So I, I'm going to step away for a moment while Steve uh, ministers to you, and then I'll see you in the afterglow. Thanks for being with us today. I love you, Pastor Loretta loves you, the Z. The Z team, love you. Don't we, church? Praise God. We love everybody who's watching yeah. and listening. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Go ahead, Steve. Well, thank you, Pastor. Thank you for the wonderful and uplifting message. You certainly gave us uh, quite a few ammunitions to grow our faith. And uh, we thank you for that. And we will certainly listen to the message again. Um, you know, I thought we'd go back to the New Testament, or I'd include New, the New Testament Bible verses in, the, uh, in today's uh, tithe and offering. And uh, today's uh, Bible verse is from Luke chapter 7, verse 2 to 6. Let me just go and read it in uh, New King James verse. A certain centurion's servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. So when he heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with them to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that the one for whom he should do this was deserving. For he loves our nation. He has, and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with him. Before I get started, I just want to let you know on an interesting fact. We know the word century, which means a hundred. And so we think a centurion is probably a commander of a hundred, but uh, for trivial pursuit reasons is actually 80. So he commanded over 80 uh, legionaries or 80 soldiers. Um, all with our today's uh, Titan offering, um, you know, Jesus was a compelled to go with them to heal the centurion's servant. The, centurions, the centurion loved the Jewish people, and he put in the necessary effort and resources to build a synagogue for them. So when his dear servant was gravely ill, he looked to Jesus for help, and the Jewish people wanted to return the favor. So they sought Jesus on the centurion's behalf. Since Rome ruled the area at the time, it was its goal to prevent any uprising or revolt from the Jewish people by any means necessary, either violent or non-violent. Non the relationship between Romans and Jews were adversarial, strained, and tense at times. For a centurion to overlook that and build a synagogue for pe so people can be fed spiritually spoke volume to the Jewish people. To Jesus, also a Jew, the centurion, the centurion was an outsider and a foreigner. A foreigner built a synagogue for the Jewish people. His contribution furthered God's kingdom in a very direct way. He did not have to do that, but he did. In God's mind, the centurion communicated with him using a Bible verse from the Old Testament. There are two components to this. He, he first made a deposit into heaven's account or God's storehouse by building the synagogue for the Jewish people. And the way he accessed that account by faith got Jesus' attention. It's very much like the tither when he or she calls on God and said, God, I am a tither and I know my tither is right. You said in Malachi 3.10, that you shall open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings that it cannot contain. Repeating God's word back to him by faith is one of the most effective ways to get God's attention. And yes, the centurion's servant was healed. Please read Luke chapter 7 for the amazing story. God is love, and he wants you in heaven, and he will always answer you. Will you call on him for help? He will also perform his word in Malachi 3.10 if you establish this covenant with him. 
Your generous contribution certainly keeps the ministry going. And, but you're also deposited, de depositing into your own heavenly account. As a tither, you can call on God to perform his word in this regard because it is your right. Put, your, put yourself and your family in this position today. We always appreciate your giving, and Z Church is a fertile ground. If the Holy Spirit has been nudging you about giving to this ministry, please, please listen to the Holy Spirit. Take the first step of this journey, and God will trust you with more. Mm -hmm.